Hey folks, Troy Dula here with the NetworkMarketingAdvocates.com website. Hope that you guys are having a great holiday season. But I want you to be looking at where we're going in 2012. You know, as I've strategized this month, looking at the 1990s, the 1980s, looking at the first decade of 2000, the 21st century, I've started to be able to put some things together. Now, it's all, it's all subjective. It's, it's a prediction. that We don't know that this is going to happen, but I have an idea that I'm going to be close. First thing, I think weight management, what we knew is, as weight loss starting out has now become bigger than that. And I believe we're going to see it dominate into 2012, not just in the United States, but I think now internationally. And the reason I'm, I'm feeling this way is because I'm seeing other companies now come into things and they're starting to, to bring out new formulations. They're bringing out new delivery mechanisms. They're trying to create something that is customer centric, that is not driven just by the, the distributors. Anytime we see this happen, we see great products come out. We see creative minds. We see science get involved so I think we're gonna see that I also think we're gonna see some some growth in some side sectors off of weight management the fitness arena you know team Beachbody probably is the well actually their parent company Beachbody is probably one of the largest and most successful video weight loss companies out there well, I think we're gonna see Beachbody continue to grow I think that we may see some other personalities Billy Banks may get back into this arena and I think we're gonna see companies like uh, Crystal's fit start to really come on strong once you've lost your weight what do you want to do you want to create something better this is going to have a domino effect into the fitness arena it's gonna have a domino effect into the skincare arena into the cosmetic arena it's gonna be a phenomenal thing to watch in 2012 looking at some of the other sectors that are out there food and coffee I believe that once people start getting healthy, they're looking at their weight management, they're looking better, they're going to be looking at what type of food, what type of tea, what type of coffee. I know I was reading Clean Living Magazine yesterday and they were talking about one of Arbonne's coffee. So I, I believe we're going to see this trend. Right now we've got billion dollar businesses joining us. Ristelli Food Group launched Ristelli Direct a little under two years ago. They're starting to come on strong. They have they have organic foods, they have high-end premium foods. I believe we're going to see this. We also, with companies like Ristelli, who are not focused so much on the organic side, they're focused on the busy lifestyle. They have a lot of prepackaged stuff. I believe we're going to see the food industry grow. Coffee, I believe, could be the next billion dollar industry out there. It is huge outside of network marketing. We have one good solid company in network marketing and now we have Longevity who merged with Javolution where they own their own roaster. So I believe in 2012 we're going to see some stuff happening there. Uh, Jordan Rubin uh, who owned Garden of Life just launched Beyond Organics, a truly focused lifestyle company on organic living. Well if you're in weight loss this is just a, a blend over and I believe you're going to see that. All these sectors that I'm talking about right now are blended together in one fashion or another which means there's going to be some synergy there's going to be some growth uh, I believe we'll see in 2012 the first organic weight management system I believe we could actually see a purely chemical free organic type of skincare that's going to be coming out because the skincare companies are also looking for a, a resurgence in growth a resurgence in that energy we just have to wait and see what happens there I believe in the utility sector uh, you know that energy telecom stuff like that man they've just had a crush together in the last couple of years it seems like the that the energy sector was starting to rise the telecommunication was starting to go down and now some of these companies have realized there's synergy here let's do some things together and that's a plus uh, after all the telecom wars went away we saw that ACN five link light year uh, were the three big ones and we've got Vitel used to be Vitel Wireless I think it's like Vitel Business Solutions now starting to come on strong you know all those other companies kinda disappeared and I predicted that last year this would happen you know and that's what I'm seeing now the thing is 5Link is breaking into a little bit more of, of a different core they're going into the business services merchant services VoIP at a business level ACN's going into the energy sector Obviously, Lightyear is a pure telecommunication company. We'll see what direction they go. But I believe you're going to see a, a, a continued synergy here that the concern, and this is huge concern for me, is that just because the industry is deregulated doesn't mean it's unregulated. With the federal agencies and the state agencies all regulating this, I, I think it would behoove companies if they put some type of a, 
of a training, a certification program in with their distributors because there's not a boatload of money. It's just like telecommunications. There's, there's very tight margins on the residuals. So the money's got to be creatively paid to the field through bonuses. That's a regulatory concern uh, because sometimes regulators look at this. We already know there's some class action suits against a couple companies. So we've got to be careful. We've got to watch. I think, I think that we'll see uh, Viridian be a strong company. North American Power is going to be a strong company. A uh, Amperage is going to be a strong company. You know, and we've already got Ignite and, and uh, Ambit that's out there. So we're going to see some things rolling. We could see some mergers, some companies. I do believe we'll see some companies leave the energy sector from a network marketing standpoint. They're going to say, we don't want any of this. It's too crazy, too wild. We'll see them leave. Skin care, obviously I just said it's going to go organic. You're going to see that. Energy drinks and juices uh, is going to continue to flatline. Uh, doesn't mean the companies are flatlining. Most of these companies from the juice wars of, of the first decade of the 21st century have all branched out. What we thought and what a lot of us would, would uh, half-heartedly say a one-hit wonder, well, they've, they've moved into some different niches. Zango's bringing out a weight loss. Monavi is going into Monavi 2.0, rebranding itself altogether. Some of the companies, like Noni did this a couple years ago, brought out a completely new uh, functional health beverage, put some new science behind it. Uh, we're going to continue to see that. Some of the smaller companies, uh, the Limu company, who has kind of stayed out of the fray for the last five years, but have been really working on not just their marketing, but their products to really bring out a quality, solid product uh, with, with what they have. I mean, we're going to see some changes take place. We're going to see more uh, customer focused in these areas. So it's going to be interesting to see. You know, you don't expect some gigantic brand new wave of energy drink companies or anything like that. I think companies like Drink Act over here that's with Longevity, we could see some rebranding, some re-synergy there. There's some brands that are in the market that will, will continue to go. Obviously, Verve, which is Vemus Products, number seven in, in America. So there'll be some continuation, but we're going to see a branch out. We're not going to see that, that tightly focused uh, like we have in the past. So stay watching that. Be, be prepared on that one. Uh, in closing out, overall, we're going to see a net increase, I think, in distributors and in sales. You know, in the last couple of years, we've seen some, some fresh blood coming in. I believe that's what we're going to see. Now, there's a, there's a couple of, of critics that have put some stats out that I want to talk about. One said, well, there's a 50% attrition rate. People leave network marketing companies. Actually, they don't leave the industry. They do leave the company. We call it churning they go from one place to another. It's kind of like what you see in churches sometimes. The guy doesn't leave his faith, he just leaves the church and goes somewhere else. We do see that. But overall, we have been net increase over the last 20 years. When you actually look where we were at 20 years ago compared to where we're at now, we've doubled our numbers. Okay, That's an increase. No matter how you look at it, you've grown. When you look at sales, we've gone from, from single digit billions to double digit billions. That's a given. That's a net increase. So you're going to continue to see that in 2012. Mergers will continue to take place. Uh, they're going to be strategic. And the reason I say this is because I believe companies like Longevity, who have, have really created, I guess it's AL International now, they have been created, creating the cloud. I mean, we're going to do a, a complete review on them, but their concept of the cloud network marketing concept is theirs, and they've done a phenomenal job to it. But what we're going to see is we're going to see some U.S. companies merge with some international companies, and it's going to be for a twofold purpose. It's going to be international companies that are wanting to penetrate the U.S. market without startup costs. It's going to be U.S. companies wanting to go into the international companies and get those licenses without having to go and invest the money themselves. They can just go buy up the whole distributorship, the whole company, the whole kit and caboodle. We're going to continue to see that. We may also see see some shifting in some of the the rules and regulations uh, looking at what the DSA has done with the with the code of ethics I believe they're going to be focused really heavy on on tightening up some areas to differentiate a true solid direct selling company from those that are pyramid schemes or Ponzi schemes and that's the issue that I see with critics a lot you know there was only 58 brand new companies that joined the DSA or applied to join for the DSA in 2011 thousands of companies are predicted to have launched and I can name quite a few of them hundreds anyway that called themselves network marketing they use a multi-level compensation structure 
but they were pyramids. They were not legitimate direct selling companies. And I believe we're going to continue to see a separation of that so that we can raise the standards of our profession and differentiate between some of these. I'm going to be doing a report in the next come, a few weeks about some of the virtual companies. Looking at the U.S. code, the definitions of direct selling, some virtually driven, quote unquote, network marketing companies don't fall under the definition of direct sales. Direct marketing maybe, affiliate marketing, there's, there's some other avenues, but they don't get the same protection from the U.S. code, tax code, as a direct selling company. You want to watch that. Folks, I challenge you really to join the networkmarketingadvocates.com. This is the type of information that we put out. We'll be putting out a slew of this in 2012. It will help you and your team stay up on what is happening from the grassroots level. Live life like it's an epic adventure. I'll see you at the top.